Hi, this is TJR, and today I finally saw the movie La La Land. Uh, this film came out in uh, early December of 2016, and it was released on DVD and Blu-ray uh, back in around late April, and I'm only just now getting around to seeing it. At the time this film came out, or I should say actually even before this film came out, when I just saw trailers for it, I knew immediately this is a movie that I really want to see. And a few weeks into its run, uh, a friend of mine uh, approached me and she asked me if I'd seen the movie yet. And I said, no, but I really want to see it. She told me that she saw it and that she really loved it. But she also told me that it inspired her in a way that she had never been inspired before. And she said she was going to go get a piano and she was going to learn how to play piano. This movie made her want to play the piano. And I told her, well, that's great. She had some questions to ask me about, you know, what type of piano to get. And I gave her my best advice on this. I know that she eventually did get the piano and she was going to start taking lessons. So I really should follow up with her and just see how that's going. As for what I thought of the film, well, I was tremendously delighted during a lot of this motion picture and also very moved as well. I was able to, of course, also just really on a personal level connect with this film. Deciding to pursue a career in any kind of the arts, trying to pursue success is really risky. You put a lot of things on hold in your life to be able to do it. Trying to have a relationship with someone while you're pursuing this can be very difficult. At first, of course, they're uh, in love with the romance of the idea, but then when they see the reality of it, it makes it very difficult. Of course, you can get into a relationship with someone who is trying to pursue the same thing as we saw in this film, but that can be as equally difficult too. In the film, you know, Ryan Gosling is a, a jazz pianist and he wants to do what he wants to do. Uh, but to be successful, he has to make some compromises. And of course, he does find the dream in that he ends up being in a band that is very successful. I have not worked or performed professionally as a musician now in probably about two years' time. Up until then, I was playing very regularly all the time. But little by little, the work began to dry out. And I kept hanging in there saying, well, it'll get better, it'll get better. It didn't get better. And finally, I had to say, okay, this is not getting better. You're going to have to just do something else until things change, which is what I did. I was, of course, when I was working, playing cover gigs, playing other people's stuff. I had, you know, would sometimes play a hotel gig. Uh, sometimes I'd be playing in a restaurant, not unlike Ross, Ryan Gosling's character in the film, where he, you know, he, he plays something really inspirational and nobody really cares. And I experienced that too as well. But all the while, I was just grateful that, well, at least I'm working. At least I've got some work. I knew plenty of musicians who weren't getting any work. And I worked hard to get that work. I was every single day calling people, emailing people. Uh, you know, back in the day, I would send them press kits. Then later on, I was sending them electronic press kits, you know, trying to just get work. It was a far cry from the dreams I had in my youth, you know, that I would become a rock star. But at least I was working. At least I was being a musician. I was doing it. So, yeah, I really do feel like this film really captures what it's like to have and pursue that kind of a dream to, you know, work in, a, in an area of the arts and the struggle that's involved, the disappointments that are involved. And, but also how important the dream is and to keep that dream alive, even when life throws some curveballs at you and things end up going differently than what you thought they would, how, how you thought they would go. Musically, I thought this film was amazing. The songs are absolutely fantastic. And there is this a theme and conversation going on in the film uh, about traditionalism versus revolutionaryism in music. And of course, Ryan Gosling's character uh, loves jazz. He's a traditionalist. He is very saddened by what he sees as 
the fading out of jazz in our culture. And of course, I can relate to that. Uh, there are, in a previous video of mine, I discussed my sadness and uh, over the fact that blues is not as widely um, accepted in our culture as, say, country music is, or not as widely popular as country music is perhaps a better way to say it. And I have nothing against country music. I just find it sad that blues is slowly, 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 slowly receding from the public consciousness in our culture. Blues is a uniquely American music, so it's sad here in America to see this happening. Now, on the other hand, though, you've got the character played by John Legend, who says, you know, hey, you know, those jazz guys, they were the revolutionaries of their time, but, you know, you've got to be a revolutionary in your time. And I think that's equally as important as well. This is where all the great music comes from. So you've got this argument in the film about these two different philosophies about music, and they're both correct. And in the same way that I related to Ryan Gosling's character, uh, how he, you know, he plays something brilliant at a restaurant, nobody cares, I could just as easily relate to, relate to Emma Stone's character. Uh, at one point in the film, she finally decides to go home. She gives up. And she says, you know, maybe this was a pipe dream. And she says, I'm tired of embarrassing myself. I'm tired of putting my heart and soul into these auditions just to be interrupted by somebody who wants to get a coffee or has to deliver a message or have people laugh while she's crying during, a, uh, during an audition. And I relate to all of that. You know, there were many days, even though I was grateful to be working, there were many days like, gosh, I'm, just, I'm tired of playing for drunks. I'm tired of being asked to play Sweet Home Alabama for the five millionth time. By the way, I think it's interesting and very fun that John Legend doesn't play any keys in this entire movie, but we do see him with a guitar though. A job like the one that Ryan Gosling gets, or his, his character gets in the film uh, with the band, I think they're called The Messengers, it's the band where uh, John Legend is the lead singer. Um, if we got a job like that, we'd be doing cartwheels, most of us. That'd be like it. Oh man, we're like, this is really successful now. But like I said, jobs like that are so few and far between for most musicians. And some of us never get a gig like that. In fact, for a lot of us, we're lucky to have a gig like he had when he played in that 80s band scene. One other thing that I want to bring up about the music in this film, this film's soundtrack had a tremendous impact on the audience that came to see this movie, it's not hard to see why the music is amazing. But there's one other thing about this that I don't think anybody's talking about or has really thought of. I have talked in the past about the loudness wars and about CD recordings being way over compressed to where you lose all that dynamic range. This has never been the case with motion pictures. In fact, I talked to one sound engineer who actually said to me, I think motion pictures have too much dynamic range. You know, you're constantly having, if you're at home watching it on the home, you have to keep turning it up, turning it down, because you've got these really loud parts and you've got these really quiet parts and you're turning it up during the quiet parts just so you can hear what they said. And then suddenly the loud part comes in and you're reaching for the volume to turn it down. And he felt they were too, com uh, you know, too not compressed enough, in other words. And I think the fact that you have an audience, they're sitting there in a movie theater and they're hearing this music on today's, you know, really nice, you know, theatrical speaker systems and hearing it uncompressed without all that compression that we normally put on CDs and that radio stations put on the recordings when they play them uh, on the radio. I think that's just had a tremendous impact on viewers and the people who've sat and watched this film. And that's why the soundtrack has done well. And that's why people are responding the way they are. And the reason my friend responded the way she did it, she wanted suddenly to be able to play the piano. I can see this film having a very long shelf life, even after its initial theatrical and uh, home release uh, run is over with. I can see a film like this being released again at a later time by a company like, say, the Criterion Collection, where they will release it with a whole lot more extras than well, what it originally came out with. And I do hope that happens. And if this film does have a long lifespan, like I, I'm thinking it's going to have, 
Hopefully then it will get re-released in theaters at some point in the future. And this time I'll make sure I treat myself to seeing this film in the theater. Anyways, though, just had to share my thoughts with you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, what do you think? What did you think of this film? Curious to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Bye.